anything that we can do to help you study the Bible, we want to do that very thing. We uh, will come out and have a Bible study with you, email a Bible study. Uh, any DVDs or any, any literature that we have will be yours free of charge. Uh, just simply ask for it. We really want you to know, friends, that we're trying to do our best to get you to realize how important it is that you will follow God's Word and not just uh, what some man has told you. And so if you're really trying to find out the, the will of God, Ephesians 5.17, then we're the individuals that want to help you do that very thing. And so we, we invite you to our services and our Bible studies. Anything that we can do for you, we want to uh, do that very thing. Tonight, I want to start off by, we want to use a, a conversation that um, a brother and I had with a Baptist preacher. And it really was quite informative, quite enlightening, just to hear some of the things that were said. But one of the things that came up in the conversation was the need for labels. The need for labels. Now, I don't know about you, but there's a lot of things that we have that are labeled, and we don't think about the label. We don't really think about what, what the label is telling us. We kind of take it for granted. But if you read the label carefully you might be surprised about what's in things. In other words, nowadays, when people are more concerned about what they're eating, uh, read the label. And there's a saying that says, if you can't read it, don't eat it. Well, a lot of things that we put into our bodies, you know, homogenized and pelletized and all kinds of eyes things, itemized and all kinds of glutamates and phosphates and whatever, uh, MG3s and or whatever, you know, you say, what, what is this thing we're putting in our body? Well, I don't know, but if you read the label, you might start thinking, you know what, I don't really want to, I don't really want to ingest this. I don't really want to put this into my body. But the reason why I'm talking about labels is because in the conversation that, that I had, uh, another brother I had with uh, the Baptist preacher, his name is Wayne Kennard, and he's from the, the Victory by Grace Baptist Church in Eden. And uh, he made the statement that we all need labels. And we were asking him about his church. And uh, in the conversation, he came up. He said, well, he said, we all need labels. He said, we changed the name. We had the name, the Bible Church. And he said, no one would come. Because people need a label. He says, people have to have a label. It's just like cans in the grocery store. No one wants to buy something to have a label on it. Well, I can see that. I can see that if I pick up a can in the grocery store and I don't know what it's labeled, then I don't know if I want to open it. I know uh, there is a, a prank that sometimes is played on newlyweds, and uh, sometimes you go into their house and you take all the labels off the cans, put them back in the pantry, and mix them all up so they don't know what, the, what it is. Well, I guess it's not just for newlyweds, but anybody, housewarming uh, uh, prank, so you can put that away and save it for a friend. We take all the labels off the cans and no one really knows what it is. Now, you might be able to figure out some cans by the shape, like this one here. There's like probably a can of Spam or something, you know, square can. Uh, but, but nonetheless, you don't know if you're going to get peas or corn or tomatoes or what it may be because there's no label. And so he's making the point. He said people have to have a label. So they, uh, at first, called their church, Victory by Grace Baptist Church, he said at first called it the Bible Church and no one came to it because they didn't know what kind of church it was. So they had to put Baptist back on it. They had to put Baptist back on it. Now, friends, I want you to know something. If you don't know what the label says, then you're probably not going to examine it. Or you're going to stay away from it. But even if you do read the label, even if you can read the label, do you still really know what's going on inside? Or what is on the inside? Just because the label says something, does that really mean what's on the inside? I, I know that uh, it used to be, I heard, heard people say, that there is a, there's a brand of chili. I guess it's more, I don't know if it's uh, up here or not, but Wolf brand chili. And it used to be, used to be told that some people who couldn't read English very well, they wouldn't eat that Wolf brand chili because it had a picture of a wolf on it. That was dog food. Well, I don't know, maybe it was. But... <laughs> It was for uh, humans' consumption. But because they saw that label, they didn't really know what was inside. And that's the way it is with the churches. Friends, when you're looking, when you're looking at, a, at a church, a religious group, and they're calling themselves something, 
the label ought to tell you what's on the inside. And so Mr. Kennard is telling us, Mr. Wayne, he's saying, he's saying that, that they had to change their label. They had to put a label on it. Now, the question was asked him, are you Pentecostal or are you Baptist? Now, there was a reason why this question was asked, because some of the things that had been told that went on in the Victory by Grace Baptist Church there in Eden. And he said, neither one. Neither one. I'm neither, we're neither Baptist nor Pentecostal. Neither one. But yet he just said we all need a label and that if he didn't put the label Baptist on it, no one would come because they didn't know what kind of church it was. So it must be some kind of Baptist church. Otherwise they wouldn't put that label on it. Or is he saying we're mislabeling? See, friends, we have to know. The Bible says you should know what's on the inside. Now, if you don't know what it's called, you might not know what's on the inside, but you can tell by what they do. So if the label is, is misleading, you can tell maybe by what they're doing. For example, listen to what Jesus said. In Matthew chapter 7 and verse 15, Matthew 7 verse 15, he says, Beware of false prophets which come unto you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall uh, know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not fruit, oh, excuse me, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit ye shall know them. Now, friends, if you're looking... If you're looking for the church that you read about in the Bible, a good place to start is the label. A good place to start is the label. Now people say, well, there's nothing in the name. Oh, really? If there's nothing in the name, why is it then that the Victory by Grace Baptist Church had to label themselves Victory by Grace Baptist Church when the Bible church wouldn't do? See? Now, if you really want to be close to the Bible, I mean, the Bible church is closer than Victory by Grace Baptist Church. But even that is not a good label to tell exactly what, what kind of church it is if you're trying to be the church in the Bible. But he said, he's neither one, he's not Pentecostal nor Baptist. Now, the next question that, that was asked was, or the, the next thing he said was this. He said, well, we don't lean either way. We lean neither way. We lean neither way. We're not Pentecostal, but we're not Baptist. Then he said, we lean more to Baptist doctrine than anything. Well, which is it? Mr. Wayne, which one is it? Victory by Grace Baptist Church tells me that you're trying to label yourself as a Baptist church. I guess because Baptist church is more popular. You know, that's a good way, I guess, to get people to buy your product, if we can say it that way, is by labeling it something that's like something that everybody seems to like. I mean, if Baptist is popular, slap a Baptist label on it. You know? I mean, slap a Baptist label on it. It's just like food, you know. All of a sudden you go through a craze, you go through a fad or a phase, and people say, well, I'm going to buy organic. Slap organic on it, boy. You know, just slap some organic something on it. I don't know if it's organic or not, but just put the label organic on it, and man, it, it, it's good to go. But how much, how much things that are labeled organic are really organic even? You ever think about that? Or how many things that are uh, labeled natural are really what you think are natural. See, sometimes people brand things because that, that branding lets people imagine what they want to about the product. So if you read something that says, you know, all natural, well, it must be good for you. Well, all natural. Listen, crude oil is natural. I'm not going to eat it. I'm not going to drink it. See that? Dirt is natural. I don't want to eat it. See, I don't want to ingest it. Just because something is natural doesn't mean that, that, uh, uh, that it's, it's good to eat. Poison ivy, it's natural. I don't want to eat it. So you slap a label on it to get people to say, hey, this is something I like. I like Baptist. My mom was a Baptist. My grandma was a Baptist. We'll slap a Baptist label on it. But is it really Baptist? See, friends, what we're going to find is 50 by Grace Baptist Church probably is not labeling what they really are they're just putting this label on here because, well, we lean more to Baptist. Well, do you lean either neither way or do you lean more to Baptist? See, I don't even know if folks in the Victory by Grace Baptist Church can even tell you what they are. 
Uh, Caleb just told me as he walked out, he said that uh, uh, Brian Edwards' daughter said that they're still Baptist, even though Blessed Hope has taken the name Baptist off the, uh, off the sign, but they're still Baptist. See, is the labeling accurate? We need some truth in advertising here. Is Victory by Grace Baptist Church, is it really Baptist? Or is it Pentecostal? Which way does it lean? The preacher says they don't lean either way, but then they lean more to Baptist doctrine than anything. But they're not Baptist per se. Well, friends, you know what? I can't find Baptist church in the Bible anyway. So I don't know what a Baptist church is really supposed to be. I guess it can be anything you want it to be because there's no definition of it in God's Word. All right? Now, as we were talking to him, then he was saying some things that started to make me realize, you know what, this, this is really a mislabeled church. Victory by Grace Baptist Church. Really, it's a mislabel. Now, how do I know that? How do I know that? Well, if you really want to know what you're getting in the Victory by Grace Baptist Church, maybe you shouldn't look at the label. You just open up the can. See, that's the one way to guarantee you know what's on the inside is just open up the can. You got a can in your pantry that the label's falling off of it. You don't know what it is. I don't know what. Is it corn? I don't know. Is it peas? I don't know. Green beans? I don't know what it is. Tomatoes? I don't know. Well, get the can open around. Open it up. And you'll find out what's inside. Now, if you really want to know what's on the inside of Victory by Grace Baptist Church, you just start digging in. Get the can open and start opening up. Here's what we found. As the brother and I were talking to Mr. Kennard, here is what he said. We were talking about salvation. Talking about salvation. What must you do to be saved? And we were talking about Acts 22 and verse 16. And so uh, I had my Bible out. We pulled Acts 22 and verse 16 up and uh, we read it, and I held my Bible out there and let Mr. Wayne read it. Now why tarest thou, arise and be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Why tarest thou, be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Well, when Mr. Wayne read this, here's what he said. He said, the conjunction and separates baptism from washing. The conjunction and separates baptism from washing. So he said, you see this? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. He says, wash away thy sins goes with calling on the name of the Lord. The comma puts it together, but the and separates baptism from washing. Now friends, I, I don't know about you, but anybody, any kid that's ever stayed up on Saturday morning, I don't know if they still play or not, but used to use that up on Saturday morning, you learned a lot about conjunctions. Because after all, I mean, there was a little song to it, right? Anybody that's ever watched Schoolhouse Rock knows about conjunction junction. So uh, maybe, just to get a little fresher here, we're going to bring up conjunction junction and let maybe Mr. Wayne can learn something about and. Not this, but that. And then there's or, O-R. When you have a choice like this or that. And but no, get you pretty far. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Hooking up two box cars, making them run right. Milk and honey, bread and butter, peas and rice. Hey, that's nice. All right, let's stop right there for a minute. Right? What? Butter and bread, bread and butter, milk and rice, hey that's nice, peas and rice, whatever it said. <clears throat> How about believe and be baptized? How about arise 
and be baptized and wash away thy sins. Conjunction Johnson says we put them together. Now, Mr. Wayne says the conjunction and separates them. Well, maybe we need to send a copy of Schoolhouse Rock to Mr. Wayne because, listen, conjunction... Conjunction Junction knows better than to say it separates. He said to put them together. That's his job. That's his function. The conjunction's function is to put things together, not push them apart. Now, if, if Paul was being told, or if Ananias wanted Paul to wash away his sins by calling on the name of the Lord, but not being baptized, why would he have put the conjunction junction there? Why would he have put the, the conjunction and right there? See, and why, why wouldn't he have said, Now why tearest thou, wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord, and be baptized? Now, even if that was the case, I think Mr. Wayne would say, See, and puts baptism together after calling on the name of the Lord. Because he doesn't want baptism to be for the remission of sins. But if and be baptized was at the end, he wouldn't have any problem connecting it. I don't think. As long as your sins are gone before you baptize, see? And all friends, conjunction junction tells us baptism is connected to washing away your sins. And calling on the name of the Lord is telling what the whole function is. Calling on the name of the Lord is what it all is. Being baptized and washing away your sins is calling on the name of the Lord. Now, why did we not put these together? Do we just not know what a conjunction is? So, in the Victory by Grace Baptist Church, the mislabeled church, we're getting, we're getting to know what's inside. We're getting in the inside and we're knowing that, hey, inside, someone's teaching you. I mean, they don't even know grammar there. Really? I mean, if they can't teach you grammar, I... Man, I, I think I'd worry about teaching my, my soul salvation about the Bible. If you can't get grammar right, what else do you miss wrong? Or what else do you get wrong? See this? And why, why not say, wash away thy sins and be baptized? Any way you put this, friends, even if wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord, is separate from baptism, I want you to consider this. Paul was still told to be baptized before his sins were going to be washed away. Even if wash away your sins is calling on the name of the Lord, or calling on the name of the Lord is washing away your sins by saying a little prayer, you still have to be baptized before that. Be baptized and wash away thy sins calling on the name of the Lord. See that? So why is it that there's so much trouble understanding that? Now, then he was asked, well, what about, uh, what about Mark 16, 16? Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Now, when he was asked, well, if and separates them, then what about belief and be baptized? He said, well, I don't know about that. Now, he should have he admitted, he said, oh, yeah, that separates them too. But you know what I think, friends? When Mr. Wayne heard himself say, and is a conjunction that separates baptism from washing away, washing away your sins. The next verse, he says, oh, you know, I, I don't know if that's the case. This is the verse that he definitely does not want baptism connected with belief, or baptism uh, separated from belief to be saved. Baptized and be saved? Now what are you going to separate? See that? Well, are you mean to tell me that belief is separate from baptism to be saved? He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So, where's salvation connected to belief here? Well, no one wants to touch this. They always go to, well, it says, he that believeth not shall be damned. It doesn't say baptized not. The first part is telling you what to do to be saved. The second part is telling you what to do to be damned. If you, if you want to be damned, just don't believe. But if you want to be saved, you've got to believe and be baptized. They go together. Right? Milk and honey. Bread and butter. Peas and rice. Hey, that's nice. 
Believe and be baptized. There's your salvation. So conjunction, junction, we need to learn something about this. Conjunction, junction tells us what belongs together, friends. And in the uh, Victory by Grace Baptist Church, they want to separate. Now, friends, here's how you can help yourself out. Here's how you can help yourself out by figuring out, well, what is he talking about? Or is this, is that a true statement? Does and separate things? Does and separate baptism from washing away your sins? Well, let's go to another place. Let's look at Acts 3, verse 19. See, the way you find out about uh, are you being accurate with the Bible is by just finding another place and see if your same uh, uh, idea of interpretation, your, your same hermeneutic, if it works. In Acts 3, verse 19... It says, Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sin may be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Now, repent and be converted? Does and separate repentance from being converted? Does it push them apart? I mean, wh wh where's the conversion part here? Repent and be converted. No, you see, you, you, you separate them. Repent you mean repentance and conversion don't go together? They're not joined together? They're not connected in some way? I'm not saying the same thing. I'm saying but they're connected some some way. Repent and be converted that your sin may be blotted out. See, they go together. Here's, here's the sequence. Repent and be converted and your sins will be blotted out. Now, friends, you know what a good parallel verse of that is? It's in the previous chapter. Acts 2 and verse 38. Listen. Repent be converted, your sins are blotted out. Acts 2.38, repent, be baptized for the remission of sins. Repent, be converted, be baptized, wash away your sins. Right? Your sins are blotted out. Parallel verse. Parallel verse. Three things in this verse. Repentance, conversion, and your sins blotted out. Sins remitted. Repent, be baptized, and wash away your sins. For the remission of sins. It just doesn't get any, any simpler than that, friends. So and doesn't separate. But if, you, if you're going to take the label, Victory by Grace Baptist Church, and you're going to think, well, I'm going to get victory, and I'm going to get grace, and Baptist is not really care, we don't really care about the label. Friends, you need to know what you're getting into. You're getting into someone that's going to separate what God joins together. Now, in Matthew 19, talking about marriage, Jesus said what God has joined together let not man put asunder. But when it comes to belief and be baptized, boy, the Baptists, they want to put that asunder. When it comes to repent and be converted, they must want to put that asunder too. They want to divide that. You just can't separate it, friends. You just can't separate it. Let's look at one more. What about belief from salvation? Now, friends, I don't know of anybody... That's going to say, yeah, belief is not connected to salvation. But look at this. If we're taking Mr. Kennard's uh, reasoning in Luke 8, in verse 12, Victory by Grace Baptist Church is what you get. Those by the wayside are they that hear, then come with the devil and take the way the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Well, and is a conjunction that pushes things away. Really? Believe and be saved? Now, here I bet that conjunction is going to connect these two things. I bet if we were to ask uh, uh, Mr. Wayne about Luke 8, 12, he'd say, oh yeah, that puts them together. Believe and be saved. Now wait a minute. If and puts them together here, why does it push them apart in Acts 22, 16? Well, the only reason is because in this verse, we don't hear anything about baptism, see? So it has to join together. Well, let me tell you something, friends. The Bible, when the Bible puts things together like belief and be baptized for the remission of sins, or repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, or be baptized and wash away your sins, it doesn't matter if there's water there or not. It's like Gorilla Glue. It'll stick. They're going to be joined together. All right? And so it... And doesn't separate things. It doesn't push them apart. It puts them together. 
And anybody in their right mind is going to say, yeah, I believe it's connected with salvation. You can't separate those two. Not if you think that and, that little conjunction and, does not conjunct, that it doesn't put a, uh, make a, a junction. What about this verse? Let's look at one more. What about this? Uh, what about believing on Jesus and salvation? Now look where the and is. Look where the and is. Now this is a, boy, this is a sugar stick that most people like who believe and who teach that all you need to do is believe. But if we're using that conjunction theory that and pushes things away, the, the uh, uh, Philippian jailer said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Well, there's that conjunction. And it's even got a comma in there too. So we know, right? Anything that's got a comma and then and is pushing, pushing apart. That's, that's what we were told about Acts 22, 16. But here, I bet it glues it together like super glue, right? Here, I bet they go together. He uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Oh, yeah. They're stuck together. See, friends, you can't say and is a conjunction that pushes things apart. Now, friends, what am, I, what am I trying to do? I'm trying to show you that when someone is looking at the Bible and trying to fit their own preconceived ideas and their own man-made doctrines that came out of the hearts and minds of men and trying to make the Bible fit their doctrine, they'll always have problems like this. So when someone says, well, Acts 22, 16, Acts 22 and verse 16, that... Uh, that and, see that and wash away thy sin, that didn't go with baptism. That comma and and, that separates them. Well, if that's the case, then what are you going to do with Acts 16 and verse 30, <coughs> 31 where you got the same thing? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. If it pushes it apart in Acts 22 16, it's got to push it apart here and nobody's going to say that. Now why is that? You know why? It's because when you open up, when you open up a can of Victory by Grace Baptist Church and you start getting Baptist doctrine, and remember Mr. Wayne said we don't lean either way, but then we lean more to Baptist doctrine, it's going to put a bad taste in your mouth. Because I know, you know, you thought this was going to be a sugar stick. This is sweet. Oh, Acts 16.31, that's where we all have to go. No, nah, it's a bad taste in your mouth, isn't it? You know why? Because you're trying to add something to God's Word. And it's just like food, friends. This, the, God's Word is food. But you start adding stuff to it, you start adding man-made doctrines to it, you're going to mess it up. You're going to mess up the recipe because you're adding to the Bible. When you start adding uh, faith only, or you start adding, well, just call on the Lord, when you start adding the sinner's prayer, when you start adding these things to the Bible, it's going to mess it up. It's going to mess up the taste. And I'm trying to help you to say, you know what? Don't mess with it. Listen, it'll be sweet. It'll taste good to you if you'll just accept that this is the way God said, or God said what you, did, what you must do to be saved. Just accept it like that. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And the next verse says, what... Uh, and they spake unto him the word of the Lord. Why? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. He was told, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. The first thing he needed to do was some evidence to show who Jesus was. And so as they spake unto him the word of the Lord, notice this, and he took them the same hour of the night, washed their stripes, and was baptized. Why? Because belief, sincere belief, belief is, in God, belief in Christ's sacrifice is going to lead you to obey Him. Faith is a working faith. Alright? So if you believe and then you hear God say, repent, Acts 17 verse 30 and 31, if you hear God say, repent, you're going to do that too. If you hear God say, 
confess Christ, you're going to do that too. If you hear God say, and be baptized for the midst of sins, you're going to do that too. That's why belief is the first thing, baptism is the last thing before salvation. See, sometimes it's just stated that way, believe and be baptized. Repent and be baptized. What are we talking about? We're talking about what God said to do to be saved. Now, you may not have realized that this is how Baptist doctrine twists and mutilates and chops up and minces the Word of God. I hope it puts a bad taste in your mouth. This is not good food. You should read the label. When you see Victory by Grace Baptist Church or any Baptist church, you ought to say, you know what? That, that, that's not going to taste good. That's not going to be good, for, good food for my soul. That's not going to be wholesome food. It's not going to be uh, uh, food that I want to feed my soul with. You know, it's not going to be the sincere milk of the word. It's not going to be meat uh, that, I can, that I can use to grow spiritually. It's got some kind of additives to it. And so victory by grace, Baptist Church, yeah. Yeah, they're butchering. They're butchering the, the doctrine of men. So it tastes bad. Well, read the label. I could have told you it's going to taste bad. It's got Baptist on it right there. It's not even in the Bible. Why don't you stop and read the label sometime? Stop and read the book of labels. The Bible will tell you what's good. All right? Now, let me talk about misleading. Talk about a misleading label. <clears throat> the question was asked, Mr. Wayne, the pastor at Victory by Grace Baptist Church in Eden. The question was uh, stated, it said, he, it said, when I see Pentecostals, uh, when you see the Spirit come upon them, it's always coming when the music is going. And Mr. Wayne said, mm -hmm, mm, I agree with that. Now the reason why the question was asked was because the, uh, uh, the brother that was asking the question, he said, well I heard that some of your members got the spirit, felt the spirit start running around the room. And he was asking Mr. Wayne, the pastor, if that was something he'd agreed with. Was that really the spirit? And Mr. Wayne says, or he says, so in all your services, would you believe in the spirit coming down? And Mr. Kennard says, yes. Yeah. That would be something you would see in the Victory by Grace Baptist Church. The Spirit coming down and moving people to jump up and run around. Now, friends, now, if you're in the Baptist church, you might see Baptists right here and you say, I'm looking for a Baptist church. Are you sure that's what's on the inside? That doesn't sound like Baptist doctrine to me. Let me read the label here. It doesn't say anything about Pentecostal. Well... We lean more Baptist. Well, what does that mean? That you got a little, little hint of Pentecostal? You know, is it like that label you see on the, uh, uh, on the shelf? It's got just a, a hint of honey, just a touch of honey, just a hint of salt, just a, a, a splash of sweetness. What is it? Just a hint of Pentecostalism? How much? If it's Baptist, why does it have any in it? See what we're talking about, friend? You need to read the label. You start, you start going to the Victory by Grace Baptist Church and you're going to say, I thought this was a Baptist church. I saw the label. It's mislabeled. It's kind of got some Pentecostal stuff going on in there. Now, I wonder how many people how many people see a label that says Baptist. Say, well, I know exactly what goes on inside of there. No, you may not, friends. Not until you open up the can. But I know one thing. If I drive by a building, a meeting place, where a particular church meets and I read the sign, I know something that's going on in there. I know something that's on the inside just by looking at the label. Why? Because I can read labels. I know what's on the inside by looking at the, at the label. Now, there may be some stuff going on on the inside that I'm not aware of, but I know something that I'm going to expect. I'm going to expect Baptist doctrine, which is what I heard on what you must do to be saved. Now, you might not expect the Holy Spirit moving around, so-called, 
But that's going to be on the inside too. All right, this one right here. All right. And more and more the way people are so uh, unconcerned about what they teach or what they believe or what they practice and all the big community movements and ecumenical movements and interdenominational movements and community churches, you may not know what's going on in there. And that's going to be a, definitely going to be a, a, a can that you're going to have to look closely at the label and you may even have to open it up to see what's on the inside. All right? But there's an example of how you can't trust the labels. I mean, if I, if I saw that, if I saw that, I'd expect a Baptist church. But you know what? I've got a little Pentecostal in it. Sounds like some GMOs. You know, in your food supply today, there's a big push. A lot of people don't like these GMOs, these genetically modified organisms. And what it is, it's where you take a, a, a food, a crop, tomato, corn, whatever, and you add a, another gene to it, maybe from another plant, and it makes it grow bigger, right? It makes it look prettier or whatever. Genetically modified. And a lot of people don't like those. Well, I'd say that Victory by Grace Baptist Church is a GMO. It's a GMO. It's a uh, gospel. It's a gospel modified organization. They change the gospel. You have to change the gospel to get to Baptist Church. Now, Mr. Kennard said he doesn't follow the Baptist manual, the Hiscox manual, or the Baptist faith and message. He doesn't have that. He doesn't follow any of them. He just follows the Bible. My friend, you can't follow the Bible and get, and get the Baptist church. There's no way. You can't get a Baptist church out of this book unless you add something to it, unless you modify it. Because the gospel does not talk about the Baptist church at all. It doesn't talk about the Methodist Church, the Lutheran Church, the Pentecostal, uh, Pentecostal Church, the Presbyterian Church, any of them. You have to modify the gospel to get that. And just like people would condemn the Mormons for bringing in another gospel and produces the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, you know what? You have to change, you have to modify the gospel to get any organization other than the Church of Jesus Christ that you read about in this book. You just have to change it. So, you need to read the label. When you read a sign that says anything other than the Church of Christ meets here, you ought to know right there, somebody done modified something. Something's been changed right there. That's, that's, not, a, that's not a pure uh, fruit of God's Word. That's some gen genetically or gospel modified uh, organization right there. Now, talk about mislabel. What about this? Here's another mislabel. Another Baptist church mislabel. I want to thank Mark McMinnis for this picture. True Faith Baptist Church. Now see, friends, you start looking at the label, you're going to say, wait a minute. I know Baptist Church is not in the Bible, but notice how they've modified this to the true faith. Now, they must be saying that the victory by grace Baptist Church is not the true church, Baptist Church. It's not the true church, nor the true Baptist Church. True Faith Baptist Church? See, read the label. What does it say? True Faith. Let's look at this. True Faith. True Faith is God's Word, friends. In John 17, verse 17. John 17, and verse 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy Word is truth. So God's Word is truth. There's, there's true True faith, now notice this, Romans chapter 10, in verse 8, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, it is the word of faith which we preach. The gospel is the gospel of faith. It's the true faith. Now friends, if you're looking at the label here, you're saying, well what, 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 uh, what kind of church is it? Well, it's a true faith Baptist church. Wait a minute. Somebody somebody's slapped a name on there that's not right. There's only one faith, according to Ephesians 4 and verse 5. According to Ephesians 4 and verse 5, there's only one faith. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. So one faith. Now, if it's a true faith, then you ought to be able to find it in the word of faith. 
Friends, we've been offering people $1,000 if they can find the Baptist church in the faith. I don't... Tr try to find the Baptist church. It can be the Southern Baptist church. It can be the Primitive Baptist church. It can be the True Faith Baptist Church. It can be the Amazing Grace Baptist Church. It can be the Victory by Grace Baptist Church. It can be the Charity Baptist Church. It can be whatever Baptist Church you want to name it. Find it in the Bible. None of them are the true faith. None of them come from the true faith. There has to be another faith to produce the Baptist faith. And you ask somebody, what, what faith are you? Oh, I'm Baptist. I'm Methodist. I'm Pentecostal. I'm a Lutheran. Whatever. Really? That tells me right there, you don't read labels very well. The Bible says there's only one faith. And you're telling me you're in another. You must be in one of those GMOs, in those gospel modified organizations. Had to change it some way in order to get it out, to get it uh, into existence, right? Had to change something in here. Either take something out or add something to it. Because if you just took this, you would only get a Christian you would only get the Lord's church. Now, look at the label again. Go back and look at the label. It says, the true faith Baptist church. No such animal. No such animal. Pastor Reverend Damon, I think it's Damon, Damon Harrison. Pastor Reverend. Pastor Reverend. Really? Pastor Reverend? Now, the church we about the Bible has pastors, right? But it never just had one pastor. It never just had one. Notice in, the, in Acts 14, Acts 14, verse 23. And when they ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And when they had ordained them elders in every church. Plural. It's always plural. Elders are the same as pastors, bishops, overseers, presbyters. They're all the same. Bishops, did I say bishops? They're all the same. All the same, all the same office. And there's always more than one. So when I read a label, when I read a label like uh, True Faith Baptist Church, I know right there, that's wrong. And then I start reading some of the, the lesser ingredients, you know, some of the smaller print. Pastor, reverend? No. There, there's, not, there's not just one pastor in the true church, the church that's in the true faith. Titus 1 verse 5. Titus 1 and verse 5. This cause lift I thee in Crete, that thou should have set in order the things that are wanting and ordain elders, plural, in every city, as I'd appointed thee. Always plural elders, plural bishops, plural pastors. Why? Because God didn't want one man rule. God didn't want one man to be in charge of everything and dictate what everybody does. Checks and balances. And even then, they're not above the law. Even in, in Paul's letter to uh, uh, Timothy, he says, receive not an accusation against the elder, but but before uh, two or three witnesses. I believe I can find this here. <clears throat> Let's see here. Uh, 1 Timothy 5 and verse uh, 19. Against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. So it's not that you don't receive an accusation against them. It's just have witnesses. Them that are in, that sin rebuke before all that others may fear also. May, uh, that, others may, that others also may fear. I'll get it right. So, elders, elders, plural, not just one pastor. And none of them were ever called reverend. See, friends, when you start reading the labels, you say, hey, this guy's called a reverend. No. Don't want to go there. Don't want to go there. Psalm 111, verse 9. He sent redemption to his people and commanded his covenant forever. Holy and reverend is his name. Friends, can you not read labels? Now, Amazing Grace Baptist Church or Victory by Grace Baptist Church, True Faith Baptist Church, they're telling you what's on the inside. 
You may not know everything that's on the inside, but you can know one thing. It's something that you don't want if you're looking for the, the purity of God's word. So I don't know everything that's going on inside there, but I know this. The label tells me enough to know I don't want it. Right? I may not know everything that's in a, uh, a, a, in a can, but listen, if I pick up a can and it says, and it says boiled okra, I don't, I don't care what's in it. I ain't going to eat that. I don't want boiled okra. See? I don't have to know all the ingredients and preservatives that went into it. I don't, I don't want to eat boiled okra. I'm not going to. So, what we're talking about? We're talking about reading labels. Now, I don't know if Mr. Uh, Wayne is watching. He said he watches the show from time to time. And I'd be glad for him to call in and try to explain that conjunction-junction part. Or explain why, why it is that it works in one case but not another. Or explain why he's even in the church that calls, him, calls it the amazing gra or victory by grace Baptist church. That's not in the Bible. Or any preacher for that matter. Why don't you ask your pastors, your preachers, your bishops, your rabbis, whoever it is. Tell us why we're called the way we are. Why don't we just call ourselves Christians? That's what, the, that's what they said in the Bible. See? Now, Mr. Wayne, he said, he said one thing that I thought just really, I was, I was so glad to hear him say it. And it just thrilled my soul when he said this. He was talking about labels and why people need labels. And here's what he said. He said, when people see Church of Christ, they know exactly what you are. Thank you kindly. Thank you kindly. When they see Church of Christ, they know exactly what you are. That's right. And when they see Victory by Grace Baptist Church, they have no idea what you are. When they see Osborne Baptist Church, they have no idea what you are. I guarantee you, you go to Osborne Baptist, you think, I'm going to find a Baptist Church. You find a club, what you found. See? You don't really know what's on the inside. It's got all these different names and labels. I don't know what this is. I'm just, I'm just looking for the Lord's church. Hey, Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Matthew 16 and verse 18. So when you see the church of Christ, they know exactly what you are. That's exactly right. You can find the church of Christ in the Bible. You can find it by name. Acts 16, uh, Mark, uh, Romans 16, 16. The churches of Christ salute you. That is, all the churches in the New Testament, all the ones that existed, they were churches of Christ. There were no denominations. So it says, well, what about the church at Thyatira and the church at Laodicea and the church at Pergamos and the church at Corinth and the church at Ephesus? Those were all the same kind of churches. Paul said, I speak the same thing and I teach the same thing in every church, 1 Corinthians 4 and verse 17. He said, For this cause I send unto thee Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful to the Lord, who shall bring you to remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Why? Because they were all the same kind of churches. And they were all following the same pattern. And they all belong to Christ. That's why he said, The churches of Christ salute you. That is all the congregations. He was putting them all together as the churches of Christ. But they're all the same kind. All the same kind. So yeah, when you see a sign that says Church of Christ meets here, you, you know exactly what you're getting. Thank you very much. You're getting exactly what the Bible says. The Church of Christ. Now friends, if you're looking for something that's pure, unadulterated, following the Bible, concerned about purity of, of, of gospel, Hey, you need to check out the Church of Christ. You know, go inside. Look behind the label. See what's going on. See if it lines up exactly what the Bible says. Right? The Church of Christ. That's exactly right. You know exactly what you're getting. You're getting people who love the Lord, who will wear His name proudly. Christians, we are the people of Christ. The church, the caught on the people of Christ. Now, what are you getting when you find a Methodist church, a Baptist church, or what? I, I'm not, I don't know. I really don't know what you're getting behind there. 
Got a lot of additives to it. Right? Got a lot of hormones and GMOs and phosphates and nitrates and I don't know what else to add to it. No. Pure word of God right here. When they see the church of Christ, they know exactly who you are. Thank you very much. And that's a, that's a label that I wear proudly. I'm a Christian. And I'm a member of the church of Christ. Thank you very much. Now, friends, let me say this. Even when it comes to the church of Christ, you still have to be careful. You still have to be careful. Because some people want to come in and they want to change the Lord's church. They, they may not change the label. But they'll add something to it. They'll add something to it. They, they, won't, they won't change the label. They'll add something to it. I remember a while back, I don't know, uh, sometimes my wife buys frozen pizzas in a pinch and something you throw in the oven. She bought some DiGiorno's, right? DiGiorno's. Put that in the oven, took a bite, I said, I don't like it, this has changed. They've changed something. Sauce is different. Don't like it. Don't like it. You know what? A little bit later, she bought some more. I said, Try it again. Don't like it. Change the sauce. It doesn't say any new and improved sauce on it. It just says the journal, just like a regular. A little bit later, she buys some more. And you know what? It's back to normal. Hey, this tastes, this tastes like it used to taste. You know why? They changed it. Change it back. Change it back. Now, friends, you may not know. You may not know what's supposed to go on in the Lord's church, but you can find this book. Now, you check the label, you'll know what's supposed to be on the inside. But there are some individuals that want to change the labels on the Lord's church. Here's what I'm talking about. Here's an example. In our brotherhood, there's a lot of emphasis placed on the purity of the church. Here's a book. I don't know if it's, you can't see this. It's, <laughs> it's huge. All right? It, it's real thick. This is a lectureship book from the Memphis School of Preaching, 1995. Man, it's thick. It's called Shall We Restructure the Church? And it is full of lessons on ways in which people try to change the Lord's church. They declare war on the pattern. The, declare the war on fellowship. Declaring war on preaching, the identity, the organization. Designation and names of the Lord's church. Uh, how they change it. Uh, morality. Uh, truth. Uh, new hermeneutics, various, out, uh, various heresies, false teaching on baptism, false teaching on love, false teaching on, on uh, Christians and, and the law. And then here's one called Change Agents in the Church, A Threat of Liberalism. And it's by Glenn, Gary, uh, Gary Colley. Gary Colley. And in it, he says, I'm going to read this to you. He says, having set the feet of teachers of, gospel, of colleges who felt denominational theory and philosophy to be equal or superior to the Bible, they not only stopped up the sectarian doubts and errors, sopped up the sectarian doubts and errors to get their degrees, but they came back to our schools and churches to deceive as many as possible along with them. Some of the brethren who are looking for preachers appointed them a committee from among the young who did not know the difference in a man who had been with Jesus and a man who had been with infidels. And they knew what was, and before they knew what was happening, the respect of the Bible, uh, they were off in error. And of course, to save face, they would not be expected to get rid of the source of the error, but rather defended the same. And when they demanded their preachers to have degrees before they could preach in their congregation, the agents of change took, the, took them away from God and from His Word. Pride and snobbery reigned in the hearts of many of these so-called doctors. Now, that was Gary Colley in 1995. Now, in 2011, Glenn Colley, his son, uh, was on a lectureship at Affirming the Faith with a man who said it was okay to take the Lord's Supper on Saturday night. Nobody said anything. Sounds to me like what, dad, what his dad was preaching on, son's falling in the steps. Now, is it not the case that you can say it, but if you're not doing anything about the changes that are coming in, what good is it? Here's another one. I got uh, just a few minutes. 
Bobby Liddell, who's an, an, uh, an instructor at Memphis School of Preaching, his lesson was on innovations in worship, contemporary and instrumental music. He says, is there any word from God he has spoken concerning what music Christians are to offer and worship him? Are those who are advocating worshiping with mechanical instruments of music, solos, choirs, and contemporary music, departing from the truth? This writer affirms at the beginning they most definitely are. The question really comes down to who sets a standard or who has authority, man or God? All right, right on, right on line, Brother Liddell. Now, what are you going to say about all your preaching brethren who associate with guys who've been at the Red River encampment like uh, Ralph Gilmore and all the, uh, I think Ked pointed out, eight people from Freed, Freed Hardeman. Now, are you going to say, hey, God has spoken, but you're not rebuking people who use a cappella vocal band? See, it's one thing to say, we've got to watch out for change. We've got to watch out for people who are adding to the truth. And another thing to say, hey, we're going to sit back and let it change. Uh, this is what I'm saying, friends. Even in the Church of Christ, we have to be careful about what is changing or what's going on so that the church is not changed. And then we become mislabeled. All right? Friends, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. Past time. Thank you for your attention. I really uh, appreciate it. If we can assist you in any way, we want to do that very thing. Work from the Lord at gmail.com, 276-340-2653. Thank you for watching. Always remember to make sure you're getting a word from the Lord. Have a good night.